Well, uh, wait a second. I'm going to share my screen right now. Um, sure. So till you share, I introduce you, Patrick Benoit is a senior director from Dinodo, Germany, and his uh, presentation is going to be on advanced analytics and machine learning, removing friction from the data pipeline. Uh, thank you, Patrick, for joining us and looking forward to your presentation. Go ahead. Okay, so we can skip the first slide. Uh, you already introduced myself. Yes, I'm responsible for sales here uh, at Denodo. And I've been in the AI big data space for a very, very long time. Actually, I already started off in data warehouse and, 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 and uh, a BI uh, over 20 years ago. And I've seen the whole journey of what has happened with data warehouses, data lakes, and of course with the AI and machine learning area. But I would like to talk, first of all, I would thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk about how Denodo, how our virtual data layer from Denodo can support advanced analytics machine learning by making data more available and faster available for your needs. I mean, um, I don't think we have to describe uh, that AI machine learning needs a lot of data and the data that uh, is needed is very diverse, very large, comes in different formats. It can be streaming, it can be data at rest, it can be in any type of uh, situation and it can be a very complex environment in order to, uh, but you have to be able to then uh, uh, provide AI machine learning projects out of these amounts of data. IDC has, a, has brought out a study in February 2019 and where they had a look at the data sources which are typically used in AI machine learning, the types of data processed and the outputs. Maybe I'll have a look at the data sources first. Um, you can see that beside what data you have in a data lake or in a data warehouse, you also have a data source uh, in a federated way. You have, for instance, uh, also still flat files laying around. Even 50% of the data sources data scientists use are spreadsheets. And what is also interesting, you have new types of analytical databases like NoSQL databases, MongoDB, Couchbase, data stacks. And you can see we have a very federated data silo area where the data scientists have to pull their data together in order to um, build algorithms on top of that. And IDC says over six um, different types of data sources are in average accessed in order to, to build such AI machine learning uh, solutions. Looking at the data process, the type of data process, in average over 40 million rows of data are usually processed and these are different types of data. These are different formats of data. It can be also survey data, demographic data, transactional data and you have to bring this data in context. So there's a huge challenge of making sure that the data is in context to each other in order to build models around that. Looking at the outputs, over seven average number of target outputs are created. So, I mean, some people want to build it into automated machine learning applications. Some want to just do trend analysis or they want to do predictive analysis. So like simple analytical approaches, but still with an AI machine learning approach behind that. And IDC says that um, the data engineers and data scientists are using up between four to seven different types of tools to perform data activities. This can be an ETL tool. This can be a new data silo, we talked about MongoDB. This can be a data preparation uh, solution. This can be a BI solution. It can be a statistical mathematical tool you're using. It can be also a data science tool. So you have a huge uh, challenge of uh, dealing with different types of tools in order to get uh, your results from data sources to your outputs. The Bank of England has also uh, uh, done a study on what constraints they personally have or they have seen when doing ML and AI. Well, first of all, we all know banking systems, core host systems, the legacy systems are usually older systems. These systems are usually very cumbersome. It's very hard to approach the data from here to model the data from here. And also the, the data availability is very poor. It's very hard, first of all, to get the data to the legacy systems, but also pull other data together. To and, and to bring a standardization on all these types of data. But I think the largest challenge we still see today, even though the universities are doing a good job of bringing out new uh, data scientists that are very skilled, 
you still have a lot of insufficient talent. Um, you still are looking for people who are able to deal with all these types of tools, all these types of languages, and are able to deal with new types of technologies. So VentureBeat said in July 2019, 87% of data science projects never make it into production. And I think I've given a couple of reasons why this is so. So tackling the data pipeline problem. Um, here you can see a typical data science workflow. People have worked in data science, they probably have recognized this. This is a very common workflow you have when dealing with data science. Well, first of all, the data scientist go, talks to the business users. What do you want to achieve? What is your business problem? What do you want to do? And then he goes off and looks around for data. He tries to identify useful data for this use case. He starts ingesting it. So he does either an ETL or he you know, pulls the data together in a silo. He starts cleaning it. Usually he does it a lot manually. Then he starts analyzing it. And then he puts his algorithm on top of that. Once he's noticed that he's put his algorithm on top of that and he does uh, and, and on that data, he does a simulation. And then he notices, well, I don't think that's the right data or my algorithm is not right. And typically you can iterate the step two to six a lot of times in order to get finally the data uh, to the business user for them to, uh, to, to share it to them and to visualize and analyze to them. And studies have shown that 80% of the time of finding and preparing data, so loading the data, cleaning the data, analyzing the data, getting the data together, um, is, is, is taken in order to get these, uh, this workflow or these data or machine learning uh, uh, um, use cases running. And only 10% of the time is for analysis and 10% of the time is for visualizing data. So there seems to be a huge a challenge of getting the data together. Here's where I would like to build the bridge towards Denodo. Um, Denodo has or offers a virtual data layer to identify useful data. Um, we think a virtual layer with a good coverage on data sources can simplify getting the data together, modeling the data, making it available to the users um, can be very helpful. Um, and it also delivers a unified access to all data available in the company. We have a lot of customers that call Denodo a data marketplace of all data. And what's also very good, we talked about the tool problem, the talent problem. Um, we can agree on that SQL is a very common language. A lot of users use SQL and they don't, and some of them don't really know how to use R or Python and they can still use SQL to query and manipulate their data for their AI machine learning needs. And also what we offer is a data catalog to search, find and explore the data assets and also to find the right uh, context of the data. I heard in, a, in, in our panel beforehand, you talked a lot about data, li data literacy and this is something what a data catalog from Denodo can offer. Now digging in, what is data virtualization? Well, first of all, data virtualization is a semantic layer between the data sources and the data uh, uh, consumers. It does not contain physically data. What it only does, it connects the different data sources in the data virtualization layer in where you can then build or combine or transform models. Um, and then it is made available for all types of data consumers. Okay, we have data scientists who will consume it, but we have normal reporting users, and it can also be used to fill um, applications and AI and machine learning uh, usages. Going a little bit deeper, deeper into what the Denota data platform does, well, here you can see the data sources again. We provide 150 different uh, uh, data adapters. These are uh, original, these are native data adapters that speak absolutely the query language of these data sources. So it can be SQL, it can be through an MPP engine on a data lake. So it can go either on a data lake, it could be in cloud stores, it can uh, approach the files. It also speaks MDX with OLAP. Um, I would say around 90% of our use cases here in Germany are also bringing in SAP data to the analytics. 
but it also can ingest streaming data, uh, you name it. And if there are exotic data sources where we don't have a, a native data adapter for, we can also approach these data sources or ingest these data sources by uh, using JDBC or RDBC. And um, the native data adapters are first of all, also very good for um, rewriting the queries, for optimizing the queries in order to get sufficient usage towards the user, to get to drive user satisf satisfaction. Once we have connected this data, you can start combining it. And here you can say, you can see that we can also provide AI and machine learning models inside that data virtualization uh, solution. And what's very important is we have a very sophisticated rule-based access control, a very sophisticated security. Governmental banks use us. They don't only use us for internal analytics, they also provide external reporting. And I don't have to tell you how important security concepts and how important security is for such type of organizations. Coming to the left part, to the data governance part, well, first of all, um, we can monitor and control what data has been used in what way um, of all data, not only of one or two silos. Basically through this access, we can monitor who has done what in what way very easily. With a data catalog, we can also provide data literacy. We can help validate the data also with SQL, clean the data in order to drive data governance on this platform. And of course, we can approach any types of uh, usage environments. So either you have data in the cloud, you have data on premise, or you have a multi-cloud environments. We can connect these environments very easily and in a very simple way. And we can also lower the cost of cloud computing and network the egress calls because it through this, through this environment. And I think the biggest and most important part of this data virtualization uh, solution is the self-service component, very important for data science users who like to use a lot of data, who like to uh, build their own models, who like to uh, uh, play around with the data a lot, identify the, the, the value of the data. And with the data catalog and uh, the self-service modeling part inside the data virtualization layer, we can drive agility and uh, 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 adaptability towards using data. Going a little bit deeper into the semantic layer, um, I would like to talk about, first of all, how do we approach this type of data? Well, first of all, we provide a physical connect layer, which basically delivers a base view of every individual data source you connect to. So for instance, you can see here, the Microsoft SQL server has a terminology for, for client or for company or for customer called company. In the Oracle database, um, that, that view could be that it's a client. And in the other sources, it could be a different terminology too. With the so-called canonical data model, which you can build in the Denodo virtual layer, you start building a unified data model above all data sources inside your company. So you provide a very strong governance, governance in there. You provide a very uh, a, a, a strong unified data access, and we all dream of the single source of truth. And then later on, when you have this canonical data model, you can provide views or models towards either individual user groups, departments, users, or you can also see, you can also provide power user sandboxes. And I will talk a little bit about that right now. Here you can see a typical uh, a, a flow or diagram of how data scientists use Denodo for, as a virtual sandbox for themselves. You can see here on the left side, the data sources um, on which you create a base view in the Denodo data virtualization layer. You start blending and preparing it. Yes, you can do a, data, a canonical model, a unified data model, but if you don't want to right away, you can start building your own views, your own models on top of that. And that's what the data scientists usually do. Then they um, analyze the data, ingest maybe local files. We talked a lot about Excel files, for instance, with aggregations in it or some additional information in it. And then they drive R scripts and store it back in a high performance either data lake for uh, computing large amounts of data on these algorithms. 
And the good thing is then after that, you if you have validated it and seen that there's a huge value behind that model with that data set, you can generate a base view back into the data virtualization layer, which then can be used either by other data scientists or other users. Here's an example from one of our customers who has done pretty similar to that, what I've just described in the workflow. Uh, you can see the different types of data sources. And by the way, Prologis, for who, people who don't know that company, they provide um, um, pr production facilities and storage facilities towards companies in a leasing or rental manner. So uh, for more agility around, I want to build up a company or storage facility somewhere, that's their core business. So you can see here the different types of data sources, creating the base view, creating models on top of that through their Jupyter notebooks, also in, uh, putting in Python. And uh, once they have built their Python models on top of that, they bring it back into uh, the data virtualization layer, in this case, using AWS, an API gateway or AWS Lambda, which then, and that's very unique, gives you the opportunity to then uh, share this data and these models and these analytics towards normal type of users that usually use a data virtualization layer through a JDBC connect. It can be Tableau users, it can be Excel users, but also feeding, and this is where you put the, the data model into production, also fe feeding other types of web applications through an S API. We also have a notebook in our package, which basically means it's based, it's based on Apache Zeppelin. It can combine query scripts, text to graphics, and you can use this notebook to share the results as I just described with other users. Um, the Denota users can create and save their own notebooks so they can play around with their own environments. But what's also very interesting is it's fully integrated with our security concept, with our sophisticated security concept. And we, with our data catalog, with our self-service data catalog, it is integrated seamlessly. Basically saying, I start looking at the data through the data catalog, I try to find the context. I say the, see the data literacy, so I understand the data. And then I bring it into my notebook if I think it's validated, if it's good data for myself, and then I do my data scientist, data science activities. So closing this part of the notebooks and the data science work off, um, first of all, I think the Nota can play a key role in the data science ecosystem for exploration and analysis. And you can integrate capabilities of data science notebooks or data science languages like Python or R to improve the tool sets for data scientists. And what's very important, we talked about SQL. Um, SQL is a language a lot of users use, a lot of tools use. So it's an SQL on anything. Regardless of the data source you have below, it speaks SQL on top. So if you have, data sources which basically don't speak SQL, we transform that in, a data, in an SQL language, which every user in the company can use anyways. And of course, we support big data technolo technologies, MPP engines for massive power processing. Um, so we also can hook up um, uh, large scale data lakes or data lake houses if necessary. And with collaboration, the possibilities in the virtualization layer, we provide a single platform for all data requirements. Customer call it a data marketplace. So I, I just want to talk a little bit about data lake or data lake houses. Probably some of you or some of the customers here already have a data lake or are thinking about building a data lake house. And people say, well, why do I need Denodo if I already have a data lake or a data lake house? First of all, if you have built a data lake house and you've been successful, congratulations. But we also think building a data lake and then always constantly adding new and new data, like if I have a MongoDB data or I have the SAP data, I think that's not the best way to go. Uh, we have seen a lot of projects fail uh, where you get too ambitious and start to saying, I have to build, put in all my data into the data lake. And in the Gartner hype cycle of July 2020 for data management, um, there the data lakes have landed a little bit in a trough of disillusionment. So basically it signifies that this type of technology 
and the expectation towards it has been a little bit overinflated. And if you want to build a data lake and you want to make it bigger and bigger and try to you know, build a single source of truth on this data lake, you're probably going to run into a high risk that this will fail. We have, and even Gardner talks about that. But Gardner also talks about the so-called logical data warehouse. And that was in 2018. And because everybody's talking about a lot about a data lake house, I would even call it a logical data lake house and where we combine data warehouses with data lakes, any types of other data sources, and connect this data together in a logically consolidated view. Um, after the, 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 the motion of, we connect the data and then collect the data towards the users. Coming back to the hype cycle, here you can see that data virtualization and logical data warehouse has become a part of the plateau of productivity. So if you invest into a project on data virtualization or a logical data warehouse, you can be pretty sure that this invest um, will be pretty secure and you will get a very good ROI of such an investment. So establishing such a project will be a very low risk for yourself. And even Gartner puts it into their one of their logical data warehouse slides and their architectures. You can see here the data warehouses, the different data sources. You have the data virtualization layer or the virtual data layer in where you then provide information and models towards all types of users. I have one customer example I would like to talk about. Um, DNB is a Norwegian bank and I've taken this example because they have provided a very good presentation at one of our user conferences a couple of weeks ago. And what I enjoyed is how strongly they use Denodo for data science work, but also for other types of information management work. Here you can say they, they're using a Denodo as an insights platform for analytics, so either for data science or for self-service, or they're even using it in a data lake style or they're using it for data democratization or data liberation, data orchestration, and so on and so forth, or even just for simple reporting, as I shown in our slides beforehand. One of the first use cases they brought out, um, they're using this as a data, they're using Denodo as a data provider for their mobile app. Um, so right now they have over 900,000 active users, over 16 million logins every month, and 5.2 million payments and transfers are done. And I don't have to tell you how scalable a system has to do, be in order to provide such services towards the customers. So we sometimes get the question around, is Denodo scalable? Is such an architecture scalable? I will bring you another example, but yes, it is extremely scalable. So the capabilities DNB expected from Denodo. Um, are very diverse. Well, first of all, they wanted a uniform data access layer, the uniform SQL access to all types of data sources. They wanted strong data security capabilities. Yes, it's a bank, and a bank has high sophisticated demands towards security. But they also wanted real-time and operational analytical capabilities. So they want to do uh, uh, very quick analytical queries, but they want to do operational queries in order to serve all types of users and use cases inside their company. And they wanted a very high performance. As we have seen in the, in the, in the mobile app beforehand, they wanted to be sure that um, user satisfaction will be big or large when using Denodo and that um, we will not have a strong business continuity and no frustrations in the users groups. And this is something IT loves a lot, the auditing and monitoring capabilities. A lot of customers say they now have a front door in where all users have to go through, which they can control and see who has access, what type of data in what way. Very important when it comes to security and for governance. And they want to raise productivity. With the SQL-based self-service and the catalog, they have made, they have democratized the data access very easily. And of course, for IT, important. For architects, very important. 
we support high availability, disaster recovery, clustering and scaling in order to support enterprise-wide solutions, also through multi-location deployments. Talking about some business use cases, they haven't really talked too much about their ML models and what they are doing in data science. Obviously, they want to keep it competitive advantage, but definitely they have 150 data scientists and analysts using uh, Denodo as a data market. They describe it as a data market. They use it for personal banking, corporate banking, wealth management, and more. Um, they're they're actually exploring a different types of use cases and some of them are already in production. And as I said, they don't like talking about it, but they talked about risk, cybercrime, anti-money money laundering, or simple GDPR transparency report, or even just traditional reporting through their BI platform microstrategy. Here you can see some examples, how they're also using the data catalog, catalog to understand the context of the data, data literacy, to uh, enable the data scientists to access their data easier, understand it better, in order to shorten that workflow I have described in earlier uh, uh, slides. Also sharing metadata and collaborating between the user groups, not only between the data scientists, but also with the analysts, with the business users, and uh, using it for simulation by putting it into S3 buckets, and then pushing it off containerized into production. The summary, the highlights of Denodo's usage so far, and these are their slides. This is not from us, this is not from our marketing. They call it a cutting edge platform to support data science use cases. They're exploring, of course, a lot of use cases when it comes to data sciences, and a lot of them are in production. But as I said, they're very, very quiet of what they are doing there. And What's very interesting, they're going to be tailoring Denodo even more to fit to their data science use cases even better. So you can use Denodo also as a, as a development platform to drive data science use cases. I only have I think, two more slides. I hope I still have some time. Um, I like talking a lot about scalability because we always get questions around performance. I'll just pick the top left example from Intel. Here you can see how 200,000 users, internal, 100,000 internal users and 100,000 external users use Denodo as a data marketplace and where they access over 300 different types of data sources. So serving over 2000 applications in production currently, over 2 million queries a day, and it's already being used for seven years and zero downtime. And they from Intel said, by doing, building up this type of architecture and not going through ETL, not going through monolithic uh, uh, data stores, they can deliver the data 90% faster. My Formula One slide, we can be used in all types of, of industries, uh, financial service, telco, automo automotive, Volkswagen is a customer, Audi is a customer, uh, Daimler is a customer. So, um, or when it comes to insurance, uh, we have some German insurance. I don't want to talk about AXA as a customer. Uh, when it comes to banks, you can see a lot of examples here too. I just want to say that regardless what industry you are, Denodo can add value to every industry. Absolutely. Okay, great. I'm, One more minute, two more. Yes. Okay, so um, when it comes to the leaders quadrant, we're the second year in a row in the leaders quadrant. What makes us different is we are the only logical integration solution in this leader's quadrant. With the KPIs you can see up, uh, up above, which gives you three to 10 times more agility, 40% less time and money in building towards a data, building a central data silo or just doing ETL, and up to 75% lower TCO, and projects can be established very quickly. 62% in under three months, 91% in under six months. And then we are seeing Intel, of course, that took much longer. I'm gonna skip that. I think I've described a lot already. I know I'm running late. Um, if you're interested in Denodo, have a look on our website, denodo.com, free trials, or go on Google, AWS or Azure. You can um, use it there, test it out there, or call us. We can also do individual POCs with you together. Thanks, I'm done. Perfect, thanks a lot. I'm just telling participants that they can reach out to you with their questions here. 
Uh, if you can stop sharing your screen, please. Sure. Okay, just I tell everybody how to reach out to you uh, easily. Okay, fine. We have made this uh, LinkedIn page for the participants who haven't heard of it. This is just for the participants of the summit. 270 people registered for the summit. 94 of them are already on this platform. Tomorrow, the rest are going to be added as well. So do join this room. It's not for anybody else than the participants of this summit. I'm just going to click here the link where you can use, you can click it, join it, and we add